Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit. This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. Thank you, Brene Brown. I forgot. I shouldn't say I forgot how awesome Brene Brown is. But I'm rereading uh, one of her, uh, actually her second book, which is called The Gifts of Imperfection. If you have not read any Brene Brown's books, uh, go stop this podcast right now. Order all of them on Amazon. I'm telling you, all of them. There has been one to five. A lot of people don't, don't know her first one. Um, which I forget what it's called. It was a blue cover. But it was Gifts of Imperfection and then Daring Greatly. Uh, Brave in the Wilderness is the newest one. And then there was another one about like, oh gosh, like revolution or it starts with an R or something. Anyways, all of her books are phenomenal. But as I'm rereading Gifts of Imperfection, if you don't know anything about Brene Brown, she is a researcher on shame and vulnerability. She has a TED talk that exploded when it came out uh, years and years ago. And, um, you know, this very keep it all together, perfectionist, Texan woman, uh, smart, realize all the research that she's doing that she, yeah, she just really opened up a lot of her own stuff. And I think it was, it was when she did that the first time she was on, was in that TED talk that we all, you know, found her, fell in love with her and, you know, she's brilliant. But here's one of the things that Brene Brown says about, um, numbing. Okay. And people will numb for lots of different reasons. And, you know, it's interesting. She has, as I'm, because I read the book first, oh gosh, I want to say like six years ago, six, seven years ago, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, a while ago. And so blown away by it. And I reread it a couple times over like a two, maybe two year, year and a half period of time. And then reading again, because I'm different, right? And so I'm seeing some different things. And so, you know, she says that, you know, numbing, she used to kind of feel before, because she's all research-based, right? Just understand, she's going to share her own experiences, but also the things that she talks about is based on research of the, you know, many, many people that she's interviewed, I'm sure thousands over the years in her research of something like 15, 16, 17 years of research. And, um, and so what she used to think is that people who numb are those that it's like an addiction, right? So they numb with food, or they numb with booze or alcohol or uh, I guess booze and alcohol, same thing, uh, dr- <laughs> drugs, you know, sex, porn, shopping, Facebook, you name it kind of thing, right? We can, we can numb with exercise. We can numb with, um, we can numb with our children even, but that if we numb, it's because we have an addiction. And what she's found in her research is that we all numb. We all have different ways to numb. We all find different things to kind of cope with what's happening and whether that can just be we want just a, a a quick little release from reality we don't want it or we just want like a full-blown I'm not dealing with the with the life that's in front of me there's just different kind of degrees of that and so what she has found is that and here's something really fascinating which is what I want to share about today is that numbing is not all-inclusive in other words if you numb one part of your nut one part of your life one part of who you are Um, it doesn't mean that you can fully experience life and not numb other parts. So let me give you an example of this. What she has shared is that, so let's say for example, if you numb the parts that you don't want to feel, it also means that you numb all the parts. So if you numb the pain you're experiencing, let's say in your marriage or with your health or with your body, with your children, it also means that you're going to numb the joy. And, you know, I I can think of people in my life that, you know, they they operate not emotionless, but definitely people that I know that that they numb in different ways. And what I've noticed is that they also don't have any, um, you know, the experiences of happiness or joy and stuff. They're there, but they're, you know, I almost kind of thought, I'm like, well, they're just not like the way that I would express it. I'd be like, because... I tend to have it where I can feel high highs and low lows. One of the very first podcast episode is entitled something like that. Like why you'll feel high highs and low lows. Like that is life. That is life. 
Life is about emotions. Life is about the stuff that you feel, right? But there is this uh, myth that you can just numb the shitty parts and then everything else will come up like roses, right? Like you can, you know, somehow you can rise to the occasion when it comes to gratitude and joy and happiness and love. But what she's found in the research is like, no, it doesn't work that way. That if you numb certain parts of your life, that means it numbs all of it. So your numbing is not inclusive. It's, ex did I say that wrong? Numbing, your numbing is inclusive. It's not exclusive. You can't say, I'm just going to numb the stress at work right now. That means you numb everything. The love you show towards your husband and your children, the love you have towards yourself, how you show up um, as a friend. It's going to, how you show up at the gym, like all of it, all of it. So you numb one part, you numb every part. Isn't that fucking mind blowing? And you know what, when I think of it too, if I just, if I'm just kind of stream of consciousness about this, our, you know, our physical body work is the same way. Do you realize that like you can't compartmentalize health? Now take a look at the medical system, right? Which by the way is designed for emergencies and they excel at that, right? If there's an emergency happening, they're not like, well, let's see what's happening. Like, how are you feeling? And, and you know, what's happening with this? It's like, no, no, wait a second. Your heart stopped. We got to go right to the heart and figure out what the fuck is happening now, right? You stop breathing. We got to figure out exactly what's happening. We got to do CPR. We got it right. Like, it's a crisis situation. It has to go straight to where that problem is. However, that's crisis and emergency care. That's not true health. That is a specific mode of health care that is emergency care, sickness care, that is needed in the moment for those, for those instances. And it's beautiful, right? And this is also, too, put on my former chiropractic hat, this is where people start to get really confused because they think that that also means health care, that somehow if their body does not express an, a symptom, that everything's great. It's like, no, 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 that's not okay. Listen. Lots of people's marriages don't express, quote unquote, symptoms. And then suddenly you find out he's had an affair. Or suddenly she's coming forward with the divorce papers. People are like, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, heart attacks happen that way too. Cancer often happens in the, way that way, in the body that way too. However, when it comes to true health and the way that our body works is if we affect one part of the body, it affects the entire body. Your body's not parts and pieces. It is a system is a beautiful symphony that's working in all different ways where hormones are being released at certain times and different chemicals in the body and the brain's synergistically, you know, orchestrating the whole thing via your nervous system. It's amazing. It's amazing. But if you affect one, it's going to affect the rest. And so think of it. Our life is no different. You affect one area of your life. You try to numb one area of your life. Well, you're going to numb the whole thing you're gonna you're gonna now numb your experience to really feel joy you know when you might have experienced people where they see like a movie and they just openly weep right or they see they watch their kids and they're just like crying you know we've all had those moments in your life where you're just like overcome with joy and gratitude and love and it's beautiful and then if you've allowed yourself to feel those feelings and you don't numb the shitty stuff, you lean into it, you fall into it, you fucking like just like dive into the shit that you need to deal with. You also know that you're going to go right down with them and you're going to go into the fucking pit. It's going to suck. It's going to hurt. You're going to want to get out. But I'm telling you right now, sister, if you allow yourself to fully feel all of it, all of it, then you will have the opportunity to experience those highs. Oh, the gratitude, the love, the joy, the compassion, the empathy, the understanding, the love, the love, the love. And you will not know what that's like unless you have the other side of that, right? If, unless you allow yourself to go to those depths Knowing that there's something here in this experience for me. Knowing that I'm going to be okay. But I'm going to allow myself to feel this shit. I'm going to feel it. So on my birthday this year, and this had been building up for a while, I had what I thought was a 
re-injured, pulled hamstring, which never ended up being that in the first place, but what was suspected with now my calf that was swollen, that literally looked like a football coming out of my calf, my right calf, of a very, very serious, uh, like they were certain it was a blood clot. Blood clots are a bad thing. They're a bad thing. Blood clots are, hey, piece of that blood clot could, um, could uh, you know, um, sever, puncture off, right, from that blood clot. If a piece comes out, it goes into your, your lungs. That's not called a pulmonary embolism. If it goes up to your brain, like it's, like you're done. Through the bloodstream, like you're done. You're done. Bye-bye. Thanks for playing. Game over. And hey, here's some drugs, which will just maybe minimize the chance of it happening, but it could still definitely happen. And so I was sent home with that diagnosis on my birthday or suspected diagnosis, suspected just about, but the next day was the confirmation of that, which I didn't know was going to come back and say, hey, it's a Baker's cyst. And it's like, what? Because they were, they were like, it's a blood clot. Ultrasound couldn't be done. The department was closed. Like, got to come back tomorrow. Here's some heparin. We're going to put some shots in your abdomen. And I go home. And we had a sitter that night. And, uh, or actually we just, cause we got a sitter cause this happened. I had, to, I went to a walk-in clinic. He took one look at my leg and he goes, go to emergency now. I'm now, it's a blood clot, go. I was like, fuck, it's my fucking birthday. Yay, happy birthday to me. <laughs> Not. And so I get this diagnosis, heparin shots in my abdomen and, and the sitter's still there. It's like, it's still like, maybe like it's 8.30. I've been at the hospital for maybe three and a, three and a half, four hours. And uh, I don't want to go home because my kids are still up and I'm just a fucking, I'm a mess. I was in the pit, man. It's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, we got, I want to go down to the beach. I live across the street from the beach. I'm like, let's go to the beach. So I'm walking along the beach. I don't even know who the fuck was around me. Like sobbing, sobbing. The pit, man, the pit. My husband's like, it's okay. I'm like, it's not fucking okay. I'm like, what the hell? Why is this happening to me? Awesome. I'm mainly these drugs. I could feel myself sinking into the role of patient. I'm like, this is not what I had in, this is not on the plan. This is not me. How do I get this? Blood clots? Okay, let's take a look at who gets blood clots. Smoker, over 65, um, history of cancer, uh, overweight, sedentary, like all the things where I'm like, it's the ante of me. How could, you know, I was in the pit, sister the pit low and I know you've been at times in your life too where it's like things are low I had this like this uh you know pit kind of feeling for a lot of the years that my husband were trying to conceive and we never did and we actually ended up adopting our two beautiful sons I get it I know why now that was supposed to happen because we were designed to be Tyson and Kai's mommy and daddy but at the time and I'd see like families with young kids I would just be like weeping I remember one time being on a plane, going to Maui. Lots of families go to Maui. We now with our family go to Maui. And uh, seeing the kids on the plane and just looking at my husband. And he's like, oh, God, here it comes. And just, like, crying. Just crying. Pit. So, sister, allow yourself to feel. I know. I know it sucks. I know it hurts. But you get to experience all of it. This is, this is the human experience. It's, it's all of this. It's all of this. So here's your more tip for today. Where are you numbing your life right now? Well, you instead just really need to feel. I want you to journal about this and really see what insight comes up. Because you get to experience all the emotions. And your numbing is not going to get you what you want, sister. It's a temporary fix. And there definitely might be a use for that at times, in short periods of times. But yeah, you got to feel. You got to feel it. So more tip you have, sisterhood. Join us over there at drkarenosram.com slash sisterhood. Do that again, drkarenosram.com slash sisterhood. You get to be in this very, very powerful group of women who are like you, but also want to stop the numbing and want to create a life of more. And you get to join us there for the first seven days for free, drkarenosram.com slash sisterhood. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast. I want to make sure you never miss an episode. And uh, they get delivered directly to your phone five days a week, Monday to Friday. So go over to iTunes and do that. 
And then number three, to make sure to, that you're part of the Want You More tribe and you subscribe to the newsletter. Right now I'm writing the book I always wanted to write. And uh, you're going to hear about it first First dibs in the newsletter. So head over right now to drcarolinesroom.com slash action guide. And I will get you hooked up on that today and send you some video trainings as my special gift to you. So I will talk to the next episode, sister. A life of more is just one step away from you doing the fucking work and to feel all the feels every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.